Hi and welcome to the sew along. The garment we're going to sew today is patterned for stable knits. So stable knits are types such as ponte or a sweat shirting fleece, something that has minimal stretch vertically and horizontally and that's going to hold its shape as opposed to say a sweater knit which is going to be very loose. So that's what you're going to need, a nice firm stable knit for this garment. Now normally knits in my patterns are made for a 6mm, quarter of an inch seam allowance but today the majority of our seams are sewn with a 1cm seam allowance which is 3 eighths of an inch. We do have a 6mm seam allowance in there but we'll deal with that when we come to it. So because this is a jacket and it's going to need um, some stability on it, there is some fuse required. So some people know fuse as fusible interfacing. The pieces that we need to fuse are two of the fronts and one of the collars. So when I say two of the fronts, you need to make sure you fuse the back of a pair. So some people get confused about pairs and mirrors. So my hands are a pair they're a mirror image of each other. So when I say a pair, we cut one out this way and we cut one out that way. So when we fuse, we want to fuse the back side of one of the pairs. Now, the pair that you fuse is the part that's going to be seen. So that's the part that we're going to sew the buttons to down the track. So if you cut one out a bit oddly, um, make sure you go and choose the correct pair to be fused. What I mean by that is this is the left hand side of the garment as you wear it and this will be on the inside and we'll be folding this back and the buttons will be sewn on here onto the fused piece. So go ahead and cut your pattern pieces out, fuse a pair of the fronts and then one of the collar pieces. Go to your machine and just double check on some scrap fabric that your stitch is balanced. Um, because it is a knit you might need a longer stitch length than normal. And because we're sewing this as one centimeter, three eighths of an inch, I'm going to be using my overlocker to tidy the raw edges up. So um, this is an unlined garment so it's a nice idea to tidy the inside of this up in some way. So I'm using my left needle and then my two lower loopers and I'm only going to use a three thread um, to finish my edges off. So huh, if you're ready um, let's get started and we'll get started sewing the back together. What we're going to do is sew one of the side backs to either side here. So we want to take this one, place it right side to that side, and this one right side to this side here. So we want this curve edge at the top because this is the armhole. We're going to be matching the straight edge here with the straight edge here. And now we're going to sew this seam here at one centimeter, remembering to back tack at the beginning and end. So this curve can be a little bit tricky to do, especially if you haven't cut it out exactly right. You might find that when we get to the notches down the side, it doesn't quite work. So what I find is a good idea is just sew the first few inches, 10 centimeters or so, and then come down if you haven't already pinned the double notches into place. Just come down and match those into place and hold them with a pin. And then continue sewing, making sure that everything is eased out. We don't want any puckers or wrinkles. Now, if you struggle with the seam, you could always sew it from the bottom to the top. Sometimes that's just a little bit easier. So when we get to the notch here, 
there will be a slight angle to stop, lift, turn and pivot and that's just to get our hem in the right place. So what we're looking at with this back princess line is just a nice smooth transition and no puckering. Now when you've done this side go ahead and do the other side. I'll sew this one from the bottom up to show you. We're going to match the hem, back tack. We'll stop at the hem notch. Just stop with your needle down, lift your presser foot and just pivot slightly. Then make sure these double notches here match. And now just continue sewing all the way back to the underarm. Now seam direction does matter with sewing, so if you decide you want to sew from the bottom up, try and sew all your seams from the bottom up. Right, so this is the stage we're at now. Now we're going to sew the side seam. So you'll need to find the piece that is the side front. And as I mentioned earlier, you'll know it's the side front because there's a small notch part way down. Turn your fabric, and this is the right side, so take the piece that matches and place it right sides together. So we're looking at this curve here, and we want to sew down this side seam, remembering to match the notch part way down. For a slight pivot at the hem position, readjust and keep sewing. And now do the same on the other side over here. We're going to match this and now because we always sew with the bulk of our work on this side, on the left side of the needle, I'm turning my garment over. I'm going to match my start point and sew down and a one centimetre seam, three-eighths of an inch. So now it's time to tidy up those seams. We're going to go to our overlocker and using a three-thread overlocker we're going to tidy up these edges. So this is the body of our garment and we have all these raw edges we need to tidy. So I'm using my left needle on a three thread. So my left needle and then my two lower loopers. And all I'm going to do is overlock tidy the raw edges. And I'm not going to cut any fabric off, I'm just going to overlock on the raw edge. So go to your iron and give all those seams a really good press and um, when you've done that come to the hemline as well and turn the hem up four centimeters and give that a press as well. So that'll just save us time down the track. So you'll know it's the correct position to turn it up because there'll be a notch here and that shows us the hem allowance as four centimeters. Now in addition to that go to your iron and take your collar piece that you've fused. On the long straight edge that has the notches in it, 
turn that up by one centimeter three eighths of an inch and press that as well and just make sure when you press that it's all really nice and smooth because we're going to need to edge stitch this later now we need to overlock the hem and yes you could have overlocked it before you turned it up but this will just double check that if you've made any errors in cutting that you can tidy it all up now so what we're looking for now is just an even distance from our pressed edge to the raw edge of our hem Right, so now we're going to do um, some rearranging so take one of the unfused pieces and place it right side up and place the other unfused front piece next to it so we've got two fronts right side up unfused now match a fused piece to it right sides together so we have a pair but they're right sides together and we have one fused and one unfused. We need to sew around to create a bag out and create the area for our buttons at the front. We are going to be sewing from this notch here around and down and to the hem on the other side. So place those nice and beautifully on top of each other and come to this notch position. So we're going to start directly opposite the notch and our hem allowance is one centimeter. Sorry, our seam allowance is one centimeter, which is three eighths of an inch. So back tack to begin and sew along. Now we want to stop one centimeter, three eighths of an inch from the edge and stop with the needle down in your work. Then lift your presser foot, turn and rearrange your work. So when you're ready, sew down at one centimeter, three eighths of an inch. So stop one centimetre, three eighths of an inch from the end, lift the foot, turn and pivot. We want to sew down on that angle. Now we want to sew one centimetre past and up from this corner here. So you've got to imagine a position one centimetre in and one centimetre out, which is three eighths of an inch. So when you get to that position there, lift, turn and pivot, rearrange your work and continue sewing a one centimetre seam, three eighths of an inch around that curve to the side seam and back tack. So now we need to make a small snip towards our point here. Now you need to stop it one or two millimeters. So that's maybe one eighth of an inch just in from the edge. You don't, do not want to cut the stitches at all. We also need to trim off the corner here, leaving the same amount there. And we're going to trim off the corner here as well. Now the other place we need to notch is this position here and even though we have a notch here we need to cut a notch in on an angle from the front towards the stitching line like so stopping two millimeters one eighth of an inch from that edge when you've done that we can turn this piece through
Now if you have a little bit of bulk through this curve edge here you could always clip some little notches out of that seam and I'll show you what I mean by that. So on the curve here what you can do is just make a couple of small V shapes just to remove some of that bulk. And that will just give you a smoother edge like that. So go ahead and repeat that for the other side. like so. So now we can see our garment starting to take place. So just position these so that the fabric without the interfacing is right side up and they're matching each other, facing each other. What we're going to do eventually is to fold this back like this and you can clearly see that the under layer, which is the top layer and I suppose it's all a matter of perspective, is showing through. So what we can do is to help let this roll towards the back is to do what's called a pin stitch which um, some people call an under stitch. So what we're going to be doing is stitching pin width from the seam on this side of the fabric. So this is the right side as you wear it and this side is the side without the fuse on it. So this is the fuse side here. So all of that seam is going to be pushed towards this side and we're going to be stitching pin width from the edge. Now because um, this is effectively a bag out this can be a little bit difficult but what we can do is start maybe um, an inch, an inch and a half, three or four centimeters down from the top but whatever um, distance you start from the top just make sure you finish it from the bottom at the same amount. And this can be quite awkward and what we need to do is push this under our machine like so starting as high as we can. Now when that's pressed into place that will just really help that roll towards the underside. Now go ahead and repeat that on the other side.
Right, so now we're going to sew the side seams and then the shoulders. So place the garment as if you were wearing it. So fold the collars back. So this side here is the unfused side, like so. So we want these pieces wrong sides together. And then take your garment and place it right side down. So we're going to start um, by sewing the um, side front seams. So we want to sew this curve here and you want to sew it down. There will be a notch to match at the center front here. And then all the way, I'll turn this around so it's easier to see. Now at the hemline, this fold here, the body of the garment, should match the exact pushed out edge of those two layers there. So we want it to sit like this. And what we're going to do is making sure this is pushed out all the way to the edge and you might need to um, press that. Place that on the notch position exactly and then just roll that around. So we've sandwiched that together so that's four layers. When you have that in the right position, pin that into place. And then match that seam as we go up. There's another notch to match here. And then there's another notch as we go up here. And then we want the three layers matching together at the underarm point here. So I'm going to sew this from the hem up on the side because I just think it will give a just a nice firm edge and I'll show you what this achieves here. So this is a one centimeter seam. So what this does is just gives you a nice transition from the front to the back. So now we'll repeat this on the other side. Make sure that seam is pushed all the way out and match the hem. And wrap that around. Now, just as before, if you struggle with that, you can stay stitch those two layers together, so the fused and the unfused front together, so just stitch them within the one centimeter, three eighths of an inch seam allowance to hold them into place before you sew them to the curve. It'll just give you a little bit more positioning power. Right, so let's move on to the shoulders. So rearrange your work so that right sides are together and the shoulders match. So we are going to sew the shoulder seams and now this is three layers. You need to make sure that these two front layers match nicely to the one back layer and sew a one centimeter seam which is three eighths of an inch. And then go ahead and do that for the other shoulder. All 
Right, so let's go to the overlocker and tidy those four seams up. So let's start with overlocking the shoulder. It should be very straightforward. Just going to tidy up that raw edge. And now, um, as you can see, just the layers have moved a bit. Just use your overlock to tidy that up in the correct position. And do the same with the shoulder on the other side. To sew the epaulettes, we need four epaulettes and you need to fuse two of them. Now I've fused all four of them simply because my fabric is just so curly it's actually really difficult to deal with. That's because it's got quite a lot of stretch both um, crossbody and vertically. So what I've done is fuse them both with um, fuse that stretches just, just to give it a little bit of, of give. Right, so what I'm going to do is Let's just for a minute assume that these are the unfused pieces. We're going to place our pieces right sides together with one fused piece on top of a piece that isn't fused. The fused side is the side you're going to see on your garment. The unfused side is the inside. So what we need to do is place them right sides together. And we're going to sew around the outside in a one centimeter seam. So start with the back tack and we're going to stop one centimetre before the edge. We're going to lift, turn and pivot, rearrange our work and we want to stop one centimetre up from this point here, right in the centre. Lift, turn and pivot. Stop one centimetre before the end lift, turn and pivot and stitch to the end. Now generally when we have bag outs we only sew 6 mil, so this is going to be a little bit bulky for turning. So what I'm going to do now is just snip off the corners there, there and there and that's just to reduce the um, seam allowance just a little. So we want to trim that back. So when you've trimmed that back, turn it through and then push it out and make sure your corners are really pushed out nice and um, sharply. Now making sure you have the fused side up, we're going to top stitch around the edge and I'm just going to top stitch around it at foot width which is around about 6mm quarter inch. I'm going to stop 6mm before the end, lift, turn and pivot. And to stop 6mm up from the point, lift, turn and pivot. To the next edge, lift, turn and pivot. And then making sure that seams all the way on the edge, I'm going to stitch back to the beginning. So the edge stitching, the top stitching, um, just gives a really nice finish to that epaulette. So when you've done that on one epaulette, go ahead and do it for the other one. Notice when I'm trimming I'm leaving a small gap of about two millimeters so that's just short of an eighth of an inch. So now I'm going to sew the tabs that hold the epaulette in place. And what I've done is instead of cutting two of these, I've just cut one under the other, so they're joined together. 
Now you could fuse these if you want, I don't really feel there's a need to and I do want some stretch in this. So all I'm going to do, and you could do each of these individually or all together, is fold this right sides together and we're going to sew a one centimetre seam allowance. All we're doing basically is sewing directly through the middle. And if you wanted to of course you could probably just do this directly on your overlocker. Now we want to turn this through, so take a loop turner and turn it through. And now just so it looks um, like a belt loop and just gives a little bit more polish, I'm going to um, edge stitch just in from the edge on both sides, just like a jean belt loop and it's only really pin width from the edge and I'm starting with the edge I just sewed and this will help reinforce it and now I'm going to do the other edge So when we go to use this we need two of them so all I'm going to do is fold it in half and cut directly through the middle. And these of course are going to be the stays for our epaulettes. So now we're going to sew the epaulette and the tab into place. Take your garment and place it right side up. The front's on this side, the back's on this side, the collar is here and this is the armhole edge here. Then take one of your epaulettes and place it right side up like that. Now three and a half centimetres away from this edge we have a line. I can't remember what three and a half centimetres is right off the top of my head but the line is two centimetres wide on either side of this which is three quarters of an inch. What we want to do is use that line as a stitch line point. So take your epaulette, it's right side up, turn it so it is wrong side up with this raw edge against that line. Now making sure that this is all nice and centred, we're going to stitch from one side of the epaulette to the other. So that line's here and we're stitching at one centimetre. So one centimetre is three eighths of an inch. So stitch from one side to the other like so to hold it in place. Because what we're going to do next is turn the epaulette over like that. Now you don't need to worry about finishing the edge there because we're going to stitch that down in just a moment. So now that's in place, take your tab Turn one end under by a centimetre and place it on top of one of the notches and just edge stitch that into place. So that is just in from the edge. I'll just go up and down a couple of times. Oh, don't know why. oh there we go. Okay. And then come to the other side of the tab, turn that under by a centimetre, place it on top of that drill hole as well, sorry I might have said notch, can't remember, and just back tack it up as well. So forwards and backwards a couple of times just to hold that in place because what's going to happen is that epaulette is going to pass through like that. So pass it through and make sure it all is sitting nicely. What we're going to do now is stitch through this edge here. So I'm going to stitch that um, just around about six mil, quarter of an inch. You could stitch it up to one centimeter if you wanted to, um, which is um, three eighths of an inch. We just want to hold that epaulette down into place like so. And of course, when you're finished, you can choose where to put your button, but generally, the button would go somewhere around here. So go ahead and repeat that on the other side. 
Okay, so the seams we created earlier, so we're going to overlock those as well. So if you've turned them through, just turn them back again and overlock from the um, folded edge of the hem. repeat that for the other side. Let's work on the collar. So take the collar pieces and paste, place them right sides together so they match. What we're going to do is sew around this curve edge with a 6mm which is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you'll have one centimetre from here to the fold, 3 eighths of an inch, and then we're going to sew that all the way around with a six mil quarter of an inch seam allowance which is foot width so start on that folded edge there are notches to match as you go and just take your time and if you need to just lift that presser foot up to ease off the tension. When you get to the midway point just rearrange your work. Just stop on the edge of that fold and back tack to finish. So when you've done that, turn that through so that the wrong sides are together. So take your jacket and place it so that it is wrong side up. Then take the collar and we want to match this edge here to the um, collar edge here and then as we come up there will be a notch to match to the shoulder so pin that into place there will be a notch to match to the center back and just continue around pinning those into place So making sure all of this is pushed through nicely, place the beginning of the collar like so. So we're going to be stitching through three layers. We don't want to stitch through this edge of the collar, only through the bottom edge of the collar. And we're going to be sewing this seam at one centimetre. So at this stage we're th sewing through three thicknesses.
So turn your garment through so that the right side is up and then at the collar edge just tuck everything in that area. So you can see now why we pre-pressed our collar. What we're going to do is stitch directly on top of the previous stitching line. So we're going to edge stitch the collar here on the folded edge. We want that stitching there to sit exactly on top of the stitching underneath. Now we're going to sew the garment hem into place and all we do is come to the hemline and we're going to sew a line of plain stitches directly through the overlocking line here. Now of course if you had a cover seam you could have skipped this overlocking step and just go ahead and cover stitch this now. Um, what you do need to make sure is that you have a ball needle in place. Now I'm going to stitch this from the right side of my garment. You can of course sew it from the back of the garment and just follow the overlocking line if you prefer. And I'm going to make sure I start directly on the seam. So now let's work on the two-piece sleeves. So this is a tailored sleeve. So we have a top arm, which is the largest, so place those right side up. And then the hind arm is the smaller piece, so place those right side down. What we're trying to get is a pair. Right, so place one of those aside somewhere safe. And the first seam we want to sew is we want to sew the top arm to the hind arm at the back arm point, which is the highest point. So simply match that edge there and sew this long seam. And you'll find part way down there's a double notch to match. And that's the way you'll know you're in the correct place. 
So sew the seam as one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. Then take your other arm, right sides together, and sew that same seam. Now let's go to the overlocker. So overlock tidy that seam you've just done. And now come to the hemline and overlock tidy that as well. Now if you have a cover stitch you can skip this um, step until later and do exactly the same for the other sleeve. Now go to your iron and press those seams. So at my iron I pressed the um, top arm, the back seam into place and at the same time I also pressed the hem into place. So the hem notch here shows us the turn position and the hem allowance here is two and a half centimetres which is one inch. So all I did was turn that up and press it and it just makes it a little bit easier for finishing this off down the track. So once you've pressed both these sleeves, we're going to finish off the other arm seam. So place an arm, a sleeve, sorry, right sides together. And we're going to sew the remaining seam. So this is one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. and then repeat. And go to your overlocker and tidy those seams up. So now we're in a really good position to finish the sleeve hems off. Um, we've already folded them. So the easiest way to do this is to turn them so they're right side out. And we want to start from um, the hind arm position. So that's the seam we haven't pressed. Turn that towards the inside. So that's a one inch seam allowance. Make sure all your stray threads are tucked up into the allowance. And we're going to start sewing on the seam line. And we're going to sew on top of our overlocking line. And that will just help hide our stitches, remembering to back tack. And just remembering when we get to those seam intersects, we want these seams to sit directly on top of each other. Now if you have a cover stitcher of course you could stitch that now and if you wanted to, if your fabric was especially stretchy and you were worried about that snapping when your arm goes through it, you could also sew another line of stitches now. I'm not going to because I didn't sew a second line of stitching on my hemline but certainly 
if I'd have done a second line of top stitching on my hemline I would have done a second line of top stitching here on the sleeves so I'm just going to repeat this for the other sleeve and you can certainly sew this from um, whichever way you like I just prefer to sew it from the inside just make sure you tuck off tuck up any um, stray threads or trim them back remembering to always leave a tail that you can tuck off because um, if you trim them too tight close to the seam what will happen is those threads will fray and your overlocking line will come undone so as a matter of course it's just a really good idea to maybe leave an inch two and a half centimeters of overlocking thread when you complete every overlock and whether then you choose to get a needle out and thread those overlock threads back through themselves or whether you use fray stop it's entirely up to you but it certainly gives you options so just go ahead and tidy off any stray threads and if you want to give that another press that's a good idea and then we can work at setting the sleeves into the armhole So making sure right sides are together, we want to sew around the edges that don't have the notches in them. And I'm going to sew this um, from the fused edge side. So we're going to sew a one centimeter, three eighths of an inch seam. Stop when you get the same distance from the corner with the needle down, lift, turn and pivot and rearrange your work. Now the reason I'm sewing this with the fuse side up is because this fabric is so curly, I'm struggling to control it. So this is a jacquard nylon merino blend a lovely texture but it's very curly right so I'm just going to trim those corners back and turn this through now the side that's fused is the outside it's the side that's going to be seen when this garment is worn now if you need to go and give that a press making sure that that is pushed out on the edge And what you'll see along the top are the notches I mentioned so what we're going to do is use these for overlap right so just go ahead and repeat that for the other cuff piece Take a cuff and you'll find this heaps easier if you go ahead and tack stitch those raw edges together. So we're just going to tack stitch within the seam allowance, so maybe six mil, quarter of an inch from the top. And make sure when you tack stitch that into place, we're going to match all our notches as we go. You'll just find it'll help when we go to sew the cuff in in a few moments. you don't need to worry about taking that thread out later unless you haven't matched the colour. 
So I'm just going to mark in the notches for you along the top. We've got a double, double notch here close to the seam. There's a notch further along here. And then we have the back arm notch there. Making sure the side that is fused is on the outside. Now the outside is the side we're going to be seeing. What we're going to do is just tack stitch this together. So what, what we need to do is work out which side's going to be on top. So the overlap notch here is the side that's going to go under. So we want that notch there to match to the seam there. And I just want you to tack stitch just the top of that into place just to hold it. And you only need to do it a short way. So this is where our buttons are going to be sewn on. Of course if you wanted to you could do button holes here and buttons underneath and do a proper cuff but um, we're doing a faux cuff. So go ahead and do that with your other cuff piece. So let's look at one of our sleeves. So this is the back of the sleeve. So um, here's the crown notch up here and this is the higher seam. So that's the back of the sleeve. And we want this slash here to be sitting on top of that point there. So the easiest way to do that is just mark somehow that seam and then turn this sleeve through. And then where you've marked that, put the cuff inside and match it to that overlap. Now we'll just pin that into place there. As you go around the sleeve now, the lower edge of the sleeve, you'll find there's double notches there that will match those two notches on the cuff and you'll know you've got it in the right place. And then this other notch here will match that notch there. So all you need to do now is stitch that cuff into place with a one centimeter seam allowance which is three eighths of an inch. Now go to your overlocker and overlock tidy that seam up and when you pull that through the bottom of your sleeve should look like this. And now you can just go ahead and attach that sleeve to the armhole of the garment in the normal way following the next video. And when you're finished don't forget to sew some buttons on through here it's up to you how many just remember to overlap that by the same amount at the top so it's two centimeters overlap and two centimeters is three quarter inch it's 
So we're going to set the sleeve into the armhole. So make sure, um, now you've got a 50-50 chance of getting this one right. Take a sleeve and make sure it's right side out. And then take the body of your garment and we want to put the sleeve inside so that right sides are together. So what we're going to do is on the sleeve there is an underarm knot which will match the side seam here. Place a pin. The seam here will match the princess line seam here. And then the top arm notch here, the crown notch, sorry, will match the shoulder seam here. And everything else should just fall into place as we go. Now when we sew in this armhole, it's a good idea to start somewhere near the side seam, either just to the right, just to the left, so the front or the back. Um, that's because there's no ease through here. The ease is, is from here to here, so it's much easier to match these points and it will make you more comfortable when you start sewing. Now the other good idea when you're sewing um, armholes in, sleeves in to the armhole I mean, is to make sure your sleeve is always on top and your body's underneath. Just gives you a tad more control. Alright, so I'm going to start maybe an inch to the front on the side. And I put my pins in backwards so that's not much help. And I'm going to sew this in at one centimetre, which is three eighths of an inch. Just making sure any um, ease is distributed evenly between those points I just pinned. So when you've gone and done that sleeve, go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So now come to your overlocker and um, overlock tidy those seams into place. Now if you've got one of these um, um, free arms I think they call it, you might find it a little bit easier to do this. Just be aware there may be a bit of bulk, so be very careful about the thickness of your fabric and just tidy the edge of that up. So all that remains now is to um, give your garment a really good press 
and turn it at the fold position which is the edge of the collar here and at the edge of the dog leg here and then we need to sew the buttons on now if you want to of course you could sew a buttonhole here and then sew a button on behind and feed it through sometimes buttons and knit fabrics can be quite challenging so there's really no need to plus you'll get a really tidy finish if you just stitch the button on I can't quite decide between putting the gunmetal or the rose gold ones on um, I'll have a think about that in the moment um, so there's a suggested button placement for four on each side so I've suggested 28 mil um, which I think looks good but you could certainly go smaller if you wanted to and uh, Thanks for joining me with the Sew Along video. I know this is probably a challenging garment for some of you. Um, I hope you really enjoy it and I hope to see you again soon.